Welcome to the Tax Estimator Program. There are several topics covered in this video. Project definition, how taxes are computed, a sample program, and project enhancements. Project definition, design a program that will estimate the amount of federal tax due. The estimated tax due is to be computed based on information and tax tables that are stored in arrays. Well, I have to be careful because this program does not really cover everything you need to accurately file your federal taxes. And so you may want to consult the official tax documents from the Internal Revenue or a tax professional. Some of the things not included like are exemptions that phase out at higher income levels and business gains or losses, moving expenses, early withdrawal penalties, IRA deductions, student loan interest deductions, etc., etc., etc. For the tax estimator program, I want to do like a system development, project definition analysis, design, code the solution, test and debug, and documentation. That's going to be your lab report. Here is a very short course in how taxes are computed in five easy steps. One, taxes are computed on a graduated scale. People who make more money pay taxes at a higher rate than people who make less money. Two, the amount of income that is taxed is reduced by taking the total income and subtracting exemptions and deductions. This is called taxable income. Three, people can either take a standard deduction or itemize their deductions. Four, the tax is computed using tax tables. There are seven tax brackets based on income starting at 10% and going all the way up to 39.6%. Five, if enough money is withheld from your paycheck during the year, you will get a refund. Otherwise, you have taxes due. So, what are exemptions? You can claim an exemption for yourself, one for a spouse of filing a joint return, and one for each dependent. The amount for exemptions for a person in 2015 is projected at $4,000 for each person. This is subtracted from your total income when computing the taxable income. Exemptions start to phase out at higher income levels, but I'm not including this as part of the program. Here's some more information. There are five selections of taxpayer status. Single, married filing jointly, married filing separately, head of household, qualifying widow or widower. And there are seven graduated tax brackets going from 10% all the way up to 39.6%. As far as deductions, you can choose to either itemize your deductions using the Schedule A or take the standard deduction based on filing status, which is ever best for your advantage. Some taxpayers, it's better to itemize deductions and reduce the taxable income by deducting some medical expenses and state and local taxes, mortgage interest, donations, and other expenses. The code provided in this lab exercise is missing the standard deduction. It is part of your project to determine where in the program is the proper place to implement the standard deduction and use an array that you look up the standard deduction, so you must use an array. Here is a tax table for someone who is single. It shows the amount of taxable income that moves a person from one tax bracket to another. Starting off at 10%, we have from zero to $9,225 and you get taxed at 10%. Then from $9,226 to $37,470 you get taxed at 15% of anything over $9,225. Here's a diagram that shows for a single taxpayer status. The deductions and the exemptions are taken off first from the total income, and then we start off at 10%, 15%, 25%, 28%. So I'm only showing the first four tax brackets. Then they really go all the way up to 39.6, but I didn't have room to show all those. Here are tables for everybody. Single, married filing jointly, married filing separately, or head of household. Qualifying widow or widower also can file at the married filing jointly. Here's a sample for somebody who is single, and their taxable income is $10,000. Then the tax would be $922.50, plus 15% of anything over $9,225. So that works out to $1,038.75. If a person is filing single status and the taxable income is $40,000, then we compute the taxes 
$5,156.25 plus 25% of anything over $37,450. What happens is the amount from 0 to $9,226, that's taxed at 10%. And then anything between $9,226 and $37,450, just that amount is taxed at 15%. And then Anything over 37450 that is taxed at 25%. So you're not paying 25% tax on everything, only the amount that's over the 37450 Here is a sample screenshot for someone who is filing, married, filing jointly, with the number of exemptions as three. The total income is $42,000, and we're going to select your deductions. So we'll have income exemptions, deductions, and then the taxable income is only $17,400. So the tax estimate based on these tables and computations is $1,740. Now, how much is being withheld from the paychecks? Well, I'm guessing right here is $2,137. And you can fill in any amount that you want when you run the program, so the person should get a refund of around $397. You can play with the different numbers and see what happens. Let's analyze the program. Here's a hypo chart, hierarchical input process output. The inputs, I want the tax status, the number of exemptions, the total income, the deductions, and the amount of withholding. If you were filing a 1040, then the total income would be computed by taking all of these things down here and then just coming up with the total. The number of exemptions, well, that's what you have up on the top. For deductions, you can either take the standard deduction or you can use the Schedule A and figure out all those things on here and end up with the deductions that you're going to claim on your income. As far as withholding, you have to add up all the amount that, you, that was withheld from your paycheck. For outputs, I want to see the income. The dollar amount for exemptions, the dollar amount for deductions, the taxable income, the tax estimate, and a refund or a balance due. Once we know the inputs and the outputs, we can figure out the processing we need to get from input to output. So we have to figure out the dollar amount for exemptions and deductions. We have to figure out what the taxable income is, come up with the estimate for our tax, and then determine whether or not we have a refund or whether we have a balance due. I'm breaking up the program to where I have a tax estimator and it's going to call several different functions or subroutines to input, income, exemptions, deductions, and withholding. And then I'll have something here to compute the tax. To make things easier in computing the tax, I'm going to have a separate function that goes and figures out which tax table to select. So the compute tax routine doesn't have to go and look at a whole bunch of different tables. It's going to get that information from a different routine which selects the tax table and passes it back. And then we can display the results. Some of the reasons I want to break this all up into separate modules is, for example, income. All I'm doing right now is asking for a single value. But this right here would be the place where we have to go and add a whole bunch of more code if I'm going to do a real fancy program and work with all this stuff on the 1040. As far as exemptions, this is the spot where I'd have to figure out how to phase out the exemptions for somebody making a higher income. Input deductions, well, here's where we could have a spot to go through the Schedule A and figure out all those different things that you could deduct before you have to pay taxes. Now it's time to figure out how to code the solution. Let's just look at one of these tax tables and then figure out how we can do it. Well, I want to take all this stuff because it looks like there's a whole lot of stuff in a table and then put it into an array. I'm going to have a double-dimensioned array for the seven different tax brackets. I'll have the beginning and from the from amount and the to amount, the amount of uh, base tax and then the percentage for anything that's over the from. To make things easier, I'm going to copy the two amounts over to the from and then see this blank spot down here in the bottom? 
I'm just going to say, I want that to be the largest number ever possible that can be stored by the computer. So that's going to be the double and the maximum value for a double. Since I'll have several different tax tables, I can have this separate routine that goes and looks up the data. Here is a sample screenshot for Visual Basic program for tax estimation. It uses a whole collection of group boxes for input. There's a group box for filing status, a group box for number of exemptions, a group box for total income, a group box for deductions, and a group box for the amount withheld. Finally, down here in the lower right-hand corner is all the outputs for total income, expenses, deductions, taxable income. And then we have tax, the amount withholding, and either refund or tax due. Two more buttons to clear everything and an exit button. In Visual Basic, I'm using an enum to identify the different columns in my tax table. I'm going to call it from, last, tax, and percent. I can't call it from and then to because to is a reserved word and I can't use it. Here is a sample array for the single tax table. This slide shows all of the controls that I put on the form and the names that I gave each control. You may notice where it shows Form 1 that's in blue. That just happens to be because Form 1 is selected when I captured the screenshot and displayed the list. Most of the code for the Visual Basic program is shown here. It starts off with a whole collection of global variables also has the enum right here. Also it has the deduction table and this is the array that you need to look up when you need to complete the program. Your job is to go and look at the program and figure out the part that's missing and that's in the determination for either standard deductions in which case you have to look up the data from this table or allow the user to input their itemized deduction. The next thing is a whole collection of routines just to process the radio buttons for selecting the tax status. And I select status as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, depending on which radio button they have clicked. There isn't a whole lot of code on this slide, but some of it may look a little bit more complex. If the text has been changed for the exemptions, I want to read from the text box and convert it into an integer and store it into exemptions. But I also want to make sure that if it's blank, then I set it to a zero. Then I'll go ahead and compute the tax and update that all the stuff in the lower right-hand side of the screen. Income, if the tax has been changed for income, I'll read that into total income and go back and recompute the tax. There's a text box for itemized deductions. I want to make that either visible or in invisible. If I'm selecting standard deductions, then I don't want to display the itemized deduction text box. So if the standard deductions is checked, then I'll set the text box for itemized deductions visible to false. However, if the itemized radio button is clicked, then I'll set the deductions text box visible so that somebody can enter the itemized deductions, and then I'll go ahead and compute the tax. Now, Somewhere in here, we have to figure out where we're going to put the stuff in to read those different things for standard deductions. I'll also do something similar for the amount of tax withheld. If it's blank, I'll set it to zero. Otherwise, I'll read it from the text box and convert it to a double and store it into withholding. This is the good part in computing the tax. I want to determine the deductions. Right here is the spot that you need to modify to update the program so that you can either have standard deductions or read the deductions from the text box. Then compute the tax income and look up in the table to compute the tax. Here is a spot where it's going to have all of these different tax tables and depending on the tax status, it's going to return one of these tables back to the main program or back to the part of the program where it's computing the tax. That way, 
the part that computes the tax doesn't have to go and try to figure out which one of these tables. You don't have to have like a triple dimension array. So only one of these tables is going to be returned back to the compute tax routine. Last part is to display the taxes. I'm using string format. The so string format will allow me to set the field widths. So where it says zero, that's going to be the first thing. So zero is going to be the tax where it says like total income or exemptions or deductions, etc. Minus 15, I want the field width to be 15 characters and I want it to be left justified. Where it says one, that's going to be the second piece of information that's coming. So that's going to be here total income. I'll convert that to a string. C2 makes it currency with two decimal places. So I'll say total income with 15 spaces. That's so a field width is going to be 15 spaces wide. That way everything will line up. But in order to make everything line up, you have to make sure that you use a proportional space font so that all these columns will line up. I happen to use Lucida Console. And finally, right near the end, process the clear button and process the form load. The form load just sets all of the things on the form to their original value. Last thing is the exit button, which does a me dot close. There's not a whole lot to do on this project. So when you get it done and it's all up and running and you do your 2015 taxes, compare it against this program and see how it works out and enjoy it. Have fun.